Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. I want to make a couple of remarks, I hope I can keep it short, on the topic that is dominating, or I should say has been dominating the German news for the last week, for the last couple of days. And that is, of course, the retreat of Western forces from Afghanistan. I think you all know about that. Generally, I don't have to explain this situation to you. For a long time, it was announced that we should pull out and that the power and the responsibility for the country will be transferred again to local forces, to the Afghan people. They were given a lot of aid over the last two decades I'm not only talking about the constant food and other civil aid deliveries that we made and we installed that stuff there and we helped them on every possible front I'm also talking now about military aid of course all the equipment all the material all the training all that stuff and now poof it is gone and it's not only gone no it is in the hands of the people that ruled there from the beginning of the 90s until the arrival of the western military under u.s president bush in the aftermath of the autumn events in 2001 so in today's video i want to explain to you what the german perspective on all this is and it is not my german perspective it is not the perspective of germans like me it is the mainstream perspective that i want to relate to you today i want to tell you what german society according to surveys at least of course if we can believe them or not that is a question that I cannot answer in this video of course and what the mainstream media is talking about and how they are presenting this in my personal humble opinion they are misrepresenting this and they are lying to the people and they are gaslighting Germans once again but let me first tell you the story or let me first give you some details well the biggest issue of this whole affair according to the German media or when you read the German media when you look at it the thing that you read about the most are these uh, Ortskräfte we call them so local Local helpers. So these are local Afghans that in some form or another um, worked for the German military or NGOs or something as local guides or interpreters or kitchen helps or whatever. And then the second group that they put focus on is of course the women's and all these feminists in Afghanistan that will be oppressed once again now. And now they have these online surveys that say that uh, two thirds of Germans are are pro and bringing these people to Germany and giving them our protection then. So we should fly all these people and their 10 family members each to Germany right now because they helped Germany and they took risks for Germany and now we have to uphold our end of the bargain and take them to Germany. What a bunch of nonsense. Did these people, ask yourself the question, did these people actually help Germany? Where is the profit for Germany when they help the German military or some German NGO to build a school or build a road or repair some buildings or uh, build an electric grid or clean water or whatever, you know, whatever these projects are. Of course, maintaining the peace and um, yeah, that is not a real peace, but a, a peace on the tips of Bayonne nets if you will but this kind of peace or should i say security is necessary to build up infrastructure you know in a war zone you cannot build up infrastructure but um did they really help germany no no german profited from that germany doesn't change because of that to the better or anything they helped or they tried to help their own country think of it this way um 1945 germany was just defeated and in the american occupation sector of course the US military government was also doing these projects like they were building roads and bridges were blown up by the retreating German forces in order to stall the um, advancement of the allies and all that stuff and the allies they wanted to rebuild these just so that they can control the country of course and also because they wanted to make money with Germany now if a young German lad of 16 years helped those Americans to rebuild repair a bridge or to rebuild schools or houses or something did he help america or did he help germany i mean he rebuilt his own country again 
Um, he didn't help America, even though the Americans uh, administered this process in the beginning, they managed it, but he helped Germany. And the same thing is true for these Afghan helpers. They tried to help their own country. They didn't help Germany. We paid for that. We didn't profit from that. So that is the first point I wanted to make. The German media is turning this around and nobody seems to question that. They seem to think all that these local helpers helped Germany for some reason. But nobody asked the question what they helped us with. They build up their own country, period. So they helped us who helped them. So in the end, they helped themselves. That's mathematically true even. All right, the next point is that, oh, everybody was oh so surprised about this. Well, there were YouTubers like Renaissance Horizon, for example, an excellent YouTube channel. Um, and if you are interested in very uh, peculiar topics from uh, world or geopolitics, this is the channel he knows knows a lot about European politics and about uh, South Africa, the Middle East, whatever. Um, he doesn't cover everything, of course, but there are some key topics that he's very interested in. And already over a month ago, I think, he said, hey, look, the Taliban are actually advancing. They are taking more and more territory. Soon they will have the entire country. And that was a month ago. So, I mean, this is a YouTuber. And I think he has the same information that I have. That is, he reads mainstream sources and tries to stay informed. And even he could see what is happening in the country. So how believable is it that all these secret service organizations and all these military leaders and all these governments that they didn't see this kind of stuff of course they saw it they just didn't care or they have some other agenda and it somehow helps them or they had orders to do nothing uh, they know about it of course they knew about it a long time ago when even a bunch of YouTubers or bloggers know about this who have no inside information whatsoever, they're just people who read the news like you and me, uh, then yeah, of course they knew. Our leaders knew about it and maybe it wasn't on the top of their agenda right now, but they knew about it. And it is kind of interesting that this is the second time that the US is financing and helping these kinds of uh, people, the Taliban, these very orthodox, very strict Mohammedan uh, people, these true believers of Islam. Kind of makes you think, huh? And there is another point I want to make. The German media makes it look like that the Taliban are some kind of foreigners, that they're not from the country, which is not true. They are predominantly from the south of the country or the southeast, uh, the border to Pakistan, but they are uh, from Afghanistan. Now in the north there are some different tribes who don't like them, but that doesn't make them foreigners. Um, Afghanistan is just, just like Germany, a tribal country. And in Germany, our federal system is in one form or another in use for over a thousand years. And it works quite well in Germany. But in Afghanistan, well, it doesn't work that well. And maybe they have to learn that without us meddling in there. But the notion that all people from Afghanistan don't like them and they all like the West, but these evil foreigners show up and invaded the country who is the evil for well not evil maybe well maybe they are evil but who is the foreigner who is the colonial power here isn't that nato isn't that the west didn't we come as foreigners well i wasn't there but you know what i mean our countries didn't we come into that country and try to install our system our kind of pseudo democracy and our values and um yeah we force fed that to them more or less um isn't it time now that they figure out for themselves how they want to live as a nation or if they want to continue as a nation at all? Why not just uh, break up into different tribes like uh, in the Balkan, you know, that the country that is more or less an artificial construct should fall apart and the tribes should govern themselves? Why not? I mean, whatever solution or non-solution they come up with, it is theirs to decide that. The so-called international community should have no say in that. 
I already said it in my last video, I think that the people of Afghanistan, more or less, and yeah, there are maybe differences between the different regions, the different languages, the different tribes, but more or less, they actually agree with these Taliban, and they didn't resist at least. And yes, I know that in the north, there is some resistance, more about that maybe in another video, but these are very scarcely populated areas with not a lot of people and not a lot of significance and not a lot of power so this resistance I mean maybe they can uh, break apart or something maybe they can even successfully keep the Taliban out of their region but they cannot take the entire country I mean most of Afghanistan will be under Taliban rule no matter what because once again the West is gone and most people there agree with them this is why they didn't do anything about it even though they had all this sophisticated weaponry and all this support. So instead of twisting the story with a lot of mental gymnastics, um, trying to convince ourselves that they are somehow overrun by a foreign invader and that against their will they will be oppressed now or something, shouldn't we just realize that this is how they naturally want to live? And maybe it's not the final state or something, but maybe it is a necessary step or one uh, rung in their ladder of history or evolution and this is their decision to make. I think we shouldn't interfere. This is their decision for the time at least. They want to live like that and we should accept that. And as long as they don't attack us or are doing something nasty, which at the moment it doesn't seem that way. I mean, just bear in mind, I mean, the casualties that I read about, uh, they were from a mass hysteria around the airport. That was not the fault of any Taliban. That was just because they tried to go uh, through to the airport which mostly the US military defended and then the same thing happens as you know at the love parade in Germany or any big event when crowds get out of control people get trampled and, and yeah this is pretty much what happened I guess but aside of that and maybe some other things that I haven't read about, but it was a mostly peaceful transfer of power. That is just a fact. I mean, um, for conquering a country of almost 40 million inhabitants, I think it's around 38, 39 million or something, um, what were the casualties? I mean, isn't that almost a peaceful revolution? I mean, of course, they are a military force, but they took over the country without any resistance. So it was actually truly mostly peaceful and this is a fact the new leaders of Afghanistan are now even saying that NGOs should stay in the country because of course they know that they will need the food and they also want the schools and all that stuff they want this aid from the rest of the world so these new leaders are saying that yeah women can still work and uh, we will still have schools and your NGOs can still be here everything will be fine and the German media is saying that all of these are lies and they will install a reign of violence and oppression but we don't know that yet isn't that isn't that very xenophobic and very intolerant and narrow-minded to you know just you know call them liars just because they have a different skin color and are a little different and have a different religion isn't that mean isn't that bigoted I mean come on man all right so now you have some sort of an impression of what the German media is saying and and uh, in the end, I just want to tell you why they're doing that. And that should be very obvious to you already. They do that because they want to have a reason. They want to present the public with a new reason why we cannot deport people who screwed up in Germany, who became criminals or did something nasty, why we cannot deport them to that country anymore and why more immigrants that, once again, can never be deported again should be coming should be accepted and actively should be um, flown into Germany by military airplanes maybe even. That is the whole reason why they spin this false narrative and why they twist reality and they just ignore the facts like I just summarized in this video. That is the actual goal. More migrants just like 2015 they want to have a new 2015 they want to create it. That is why they're systematically lying to the public about these things. And that is probably also the reason why our leaders act so surprised about this.
Let me know what you think about that and how the media in your country covers this. And if your government also says, yes, we need to help these people. They were risking everything for Western values. And now we owe them our assistance and our help. In the comments down below, servus, Kameraden.